Hello, video friends. On last week's podcast, we talked briefly about uh, making Ethernet cable, uh, CAT 5e or CAT 6. If you're installing an audio over IP network in your studios, chances are you're going to want to run unterminated CAT 6 cable and put ends on it yourself. That's very easy to do, but if you're not familiar, I'm going to take you through the process and uh, show you some tips and tricks that might save some time. Once you run a lot of these, you'll understand why some of these little time savers are worth something. All right, let's take a look at some of the tools that you're going to be using uh, when making these cables. So let's start with, uh, you need a good uh, cable stripper. Obviously, you have to strip back some of the cable jacket to get to the, uh, the pairs of wires. So this is from Platinum Tools. This is called the Cyclops. This is actually the Cyclops 2. I don't know what was wrong with the Cyclops 1, but this is the second one. Uh, it's very simple. It's got an elastic band around it. You stretch it open, put the cable through, rotate it around the cable, presto. Uh, when these are brand new, the elastic bands are actually so tight that it might nick the, uh, the eight pairs inside the jacket. So pay attention to that. You might want to work it out first before you start using it. You'll also need some sort of wire cutter. Um, this is multi-purpose. You'll need to cut, uh, the CAT6 cable off of the reel or the box or however you've purchased it in bulk. Um, I also use these to trim the pairs to length when I'm, I'm about to put it on the connector. Um, this might not be the best tool for the job. There are cable scissors that are actually a little bit better for this. Um, wire cutters like this will, will slightly deform the copper when you cut it, making it a little bit harder to get it into the connector. Uh, the scissors are specially designed to keep the copper as circular as possible, so uh, you might want to look for those. Not a big cost difference. And then the most important thing, you're going to want a good um, crimp tool. And we talked about this on the podcast a little bit. This is from Platinum Tools. This is the Easy RJ Pro HD. I don't know why it's HD, but it is. Uh, Platinum Tools makes a cheaper version of this that uh, isn't very good. Just don't get it. You want to go with this, you'll notice it by the big comfort handle. Maybe HD stands for handle. Um, so get this one. Uh, this is the Pro HD. I don't think the other one is Pro, but um, yeah, you'll like this better. This actually has on board uh, a cable stripper and a cable cutter. I rarely ever use them. I think they're kind of hard to use. You have to you have to pass the cable through the handle, and it's just tricky. So um, they're there if you want them, but I prefer outboard gear. All right. So I have with me a piece of just everyday standard Cat 6. Uh, this is, I believe this is non-plenum. Uh, the rules are, if you're running Cat 6 through your building, Anywhere that you're running cable in a ventilation area, so if you're running it through air ducts, for example, or um, I, I'm not exactly sure what the code is, and it might vary from state to state, but if you're running Ethernet in an air duct, which is possible, you have to use plenum cable. And, and basically, it's, it's a different kind of plastic jacket. Um, Non-plenum plastic or non-plenum cable, uh, the plastic jacket is actually toxic when it burns. So you have to run plenum in the event there's a fire. Uh, you don't spread toxic fumes through the building. So think about that. All right, let me show you the kind of connectors we're going to use. We talked about this on the podcast last week. These are the easy RJ45 connectors, and they are easy. If you've ever put an Ethernet end on CAT6, an RJ45 end, um, the, the standard connector, basically you trim the wires back to the right length, and put it in the connector and you have to make sure the wires make it to the connector points on the connector but that your jacket has also made it inside the connector. It's a balancing act to get the right length. The easy RJ45 connectors from Platinum Tools are actually open on the end and I don't know if you can see this on the video but it allows you to pass the wires through the connector and then trim them off all part of the crimp process so you don't have to worry about the length that you've made the individual pairs. That is really, really nice. So look for these. They are 
marginally more expensive than a, a standard uh, RJ45 connector, but it's absolutely worth it in the time savings and frustration savings. Along with those connectors comes, well, you can get the strain relief that works specifically with the RJ40, easy RJ45 connectors. Uh, I highly recommend this. To make certification worthy CAT6, you have to have strain relief on the back. These are cheap, easy to put on, and they, they actually crimp down to the connector so they stay there. Um, these are really nice, so look for those as well. So the first thing we do before we ever trim the cable back is put the strain relief on. I can't tell you how many times I've forgotten it. You will too, and that's okay. So go ahead and put that on there. Then we're going to take our stripper, our cyclops tool. and Normally, you would, you would only trim back so far. In this case, we're going to take it way back here uh, so that I can show you the pass-through. Give this a single turn. Flex it a little bit and take that off. And then check your conductors to make sure you haven't nicked them, and we haven't. All right. First thing we're going to do is cut off the uh, extra junk inside the cable that we don't need. You might have a spline in there. Uh, all kinds of different manufacturers use different things. Just trim all that back to the jacket. All right, little tip number one. Normally the hardest part is separating these and then untwisting them all. If you take the jacket that you just cut off, take that and slide it down over one of the wires in the pair, and then just twist on down, and it will separate it. And then if you grab at the bottom and pull back, you can see it kind of straightens it out. That will save your fingers a lot of fatigue. Now we'll take the camera into super fast mode and get through all these pairs. And we're back. All right, and there we go. We've separated all the pairs. We have them all individual. So now to take them out and uh, put them in the right order. Everybody, if you've ever watched videos on how to make this, everybody has their own method. Um, some people hate the way I'm going to do it. Some people don't care. I, I don't care. So <laughs> first thing we're going to do is take our oranges and get them out of the way. There we go. All right, so we're going to go white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, and brown. Okay, so they're just sort of rough in my hands like that. Now I'm just going to take it and try to sort of straighten them out as best I can without losing the order of the wires. So if you work with uh, Cat5e first and then move on to 6, you'll notice that 6 is much more rigid and harder to work with. That's part of what makes it Cat6. So uh, it is a little bit more difficult to work with, but you want that in the long run. All right, so I'm just, I don't need to trim all this back, but I'm going to take it back to where uh, the cables look pretty straight and, uh, and arranged well. We'll just cut those off there. Make a mess. All right. So now we've got them arranged in the right order. White, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. We're going to take our connector and pin one. If you look at it from the, what I would call the bottom of the connector, where the actual copper points are, leaving the tab down, pin one is on this side, and that's going to be your white, orange, okay? So now if you... Carefully put it in there. There are little channels inside of the connector that actually grab each wire. But it might take a couple tries. True story. <laughs> okay. Once you get it through, go ahead and check the order. Make sure that none of them got uh, moved around. White, orange, orange. White, green, blue. White, blue, green. White, brown, brown. We're in good shape. You'll also notice the different manufacturers of cable use all kinds of different uh, coloring, not, not different colors, but um, different um, dyes and whatnot to make the color, and sometimes they're very hard to distinguish. 
So you might have to look pretty closely. All right, so we want to get the jacket as far into the cable as we can, or I'm sorry, as far into the connector as we can. Um, part of the certification process is minimizing the distance between the last twist in your wires and the connector points. So we've got that pretty close, if you can see on camera, that might be hard to see. What I like to do is then twist these together so that the connector can't move. Bring our strain relief back in and push it into the connector. Put the tabs together, as you can see. Make sure it's all tight, and then we take our crimp tool. Not much explaining here. This is the only piece it fits into, so you put it in there. Make sure all your cables came through, and then crimp. You can uh, just kind of wiggle off the excess cable. You might need to crimp it a couple times. Boom, it's trimmed them all off. Looks good. Uh, now, the most important thing after you've crimped both ends of your cable, you gotta test it. Well, that's basically it. You're gonna do that again for that cable and then probably hundreds more times through your career. So uh, you'll get good at it. It's, it's easy, huge time saver. Um, once you know how to do it and can fly through these, uh, it's, a, it's a good connector and um, very standard. So you'll make lots of these. All right, I appreciate you watching. Uh, as always, visit our website at theradiotechguys.com, theradiotechguys.com. Uh, we would love to get your questions. We'll try to give you answers. You can email us at ask at theradiotechguys.com. Please subscribe, join our podcast, and uh, we'll love to hear from you. Thanks so much. See you next time.